Hey everyone, I'm Virginia with CloudPoint Geospatial, and we're going to go over how to do a valve isolation trace in the ArcGIS Utility Network. So you're looking at sample water data from Naperville provided by Esri as part of their Utility Network Foundation Solutions. Before we get started, I did want to briefly go over Utility Network categories. So categories are basically tags. They're a property that describes a feature and what that feature represents, and they can be used as part of trace configurations. So this is the data dictionary that comes with the Utility Network solution. And if we go ahead and expand categories, we can see that there's a category called isolating. If I click that, I can see that the category is used in water device and system valves. Clicking that further, we can see the various asset types where that category is applicable. So this is important because we're going to use that tag to stop the trace when it gets to a valve with the category that is equal to isolating. Let's go ahead and get started. Zoom into an area. Go ahead and shut off the pressure district here. So I'm going to click the Utility Network button, exposing the Utility Network tools. In the center, we have our tracing tools. So under Trace Location, we have our starting points. Uh, we'll see that in a second. That's going to be the origin of the trace. Uh, then we have barriers where we can place those manually uh, to stop the trace at those locations. Over here we have uh, out-of-the-box trace configurations provided by Esri. So if we click on this, we can see connected trace, loops, shortest path, and here's our isolation trace that we're going to use. So, so why would we want to do an isolation trace in the first place? So one of the most common reasons is that we have a main break and we want to know which valves that we need to turn off uh, to isolate that. Um, another reason might be as part of the parameters, which we'll see in a second, uh, we can include the isolated features, which would be the service connections here. I've added a field for address. So it, when we include those, we have a really easy way to be able to export the addresses that are impacted by this and, and maybe send out a mailer to notify those residents. A third reason might be, let's say we know which valves to shut off, but we want to run this trace and check to see if we're getting the results that we expected. So, you know, placing these checks on our GIS uh, could be another reason. So I'm going to go ahead and start the trace. So I'm going to pick my starting location. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to click on the main. And then I'm going to choose isolation as my trace. It's going to open the geoprocessing trace pane. Over here we can see our utility network populates. Um, the, the isolation trace populates because I chose it from the gallery, but we could choose a different trace type if we wanted to. We have our starting points and barriers. For domain network, water is our only one. And the tier, we're going to use just the water system here. We have uh, some various parameters and checkboxes that are checked by default, so including our containers and our content, uh, structural attachments, um, validating the consistency. So this one's important. If you have done any edits and you have not validated your topology um, and this box is checked, it is the trace is going to fail when you run it. So I like to keep this checked just to make sure that my my network is clean, that um, that there aren't any you know if somebody's done some edits that I have made sure that those um, are following the rules that we've set out. So it's always good in my opinion to keep that box checked. So let's look down at some of the other parameters. So traversability. So what is the difference between traversability and connectivity? So we can think of connectivity as a state where two or more features are connected either through a connectivity association or through geometric coincidence. And traversability is a state where those two features that have valid connectivity, they also have a path between them satisfied by the trace. And in this case, uh, these were set up as the defaults when, when we did the subnetwork uh, definition when we set that. So I did accept the defaults here. You can see this X, so you could delete these if you wanted to for the trace and run it. You can add more condition barriers. So what this is saying is that the trace is going to stop if the device status is closed, if it is not in service or to be retired, um, or if there's a category that says CP or cathetic protection only. So let's look down at the filters because this is what we're going to use for the valve isolation trace. We're going to set up a filter barrier. So filter barriers work on categories and network attributes. So we're going to start out here with our category. 
You can see our operator is equal to. We're going to leave that, but we have lots of choices here if we expand that. And then you have uh, the option to, for specific value or network attribute. We're going to keep that at specific value, and our value is going to be isolating. We're going to leave everything else, both, both uh, junctions and edges, and we're going to go ahead and run. We've got our results. We can see that there's two selected features. If I zoom out, I can see which valves I need to shut off. So as we talked about earlier, let's go ahead and include the isolated features and rerun this trace. So now that has included everything that is within the, the isolated area. If we click up here on select we can see that we have 100 devices that are affected and here's our 46 service connections so we have 46 uh, residences that are going to be impacted by this again i told you that i had created a field so if we open our attribute table here going to scroll over and I have all the service addresses so now I could easily export this to Excel and have a list of addresses. Let's go ahead and clear this out and another uh, instance is, is that we can build upon these filters so let's say that we know that we have a valve that has been paved over. It's not operable for, for some reason. And we want to make sure that when we're doing these valve, iso valve isolation traces, that we have operable valves that are, that are being selected as the ones we need to close. So we can add another filter barrier. So we're going to go ahead and say, this time we're going to choose a network attribute, which is operable is equal to true. Now, this is the this is the important part here. We need to we need an and statement, not an or statement. So this is going to say that the valve has to be isolating and that the valve also has to be operable. So let's go ahead and run this and see what results we get. Oh. Let's actually run that one more time without including our isolated features. Just to give us a little bit there we go. So now you can see it passed by the this valve because I have it as not operable. And then it has showed us the next set of valves that would need to be turned off in order to isolate this. So those are the basics of valve isolation trace in ArcGIS Utility Network. Uh, thanks for watching.